Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, today we're going to be looking at a um, interesting axe, a military axe, um, which has a repairs durability mechanic on it, which means that you can technically use it in its ethereal form. Um, and that is known as the Warlord's Trust. Uh, whether or not the Warlord's Trust is good enough to be used by, you know, an endgame character, we'll find out. But uh, as an exceptional level item, it only has a level requirement of 35, so yeah, it's uh, particularly low. Um, let's go over the non-ethereal version first, and then we'll talk about the ethereal version. So, um, the Warlord's Trust is a military axe of 38 to 93 damage. Um, at level 35, that's a little low. Um, I've actually seen two-handed weapons go a lot higher than that at level 35. Uh, 73 strength requirements, which is practically nothing, and no dexterity requirements. Um, it has 175% enhanced damage on it, which is static, and it does not change. Uh, we also have 75 defense, which again is also static. Um, and then we have a very interesting uh, vitality based on character level, which is pretty cool, uh, which means that you're going to get a different amount of HP depending on your character, because some characters only get one HP point per vitality, some characters get 1.5, some of them get 2. So uh, depending on your character, uh, this will have a greater or lesser effect. Uh, druids actually have pretty terrible vitality per uh, or health per vitality, uh, for instance. But druids also get massive HP bonuses in the form of, you know, oak sage and and bear form and all that other cool stuff. So it kind of uh, balances out. Uh, but 49 vitality, as you can see, um, gives me basically 1,633 to 1,829, which is a pretty healthy bump in uh, HP. And on top of that, because it is vitality instead of hit points. Um, it can be buffed, so if we go out and we buff up our HP here, um, the vitality based on character level will actually give us a larger effect. So now we're going from 3,353 to 3,549, which is, um, what is that, 100, uh, 200, a little under 200 HP for 50 vitality, which is pretty good. I mean, 49 Vitality should technically be giving the Barbarian, because I'm pretty sure he's a 2 per, two per Vite. Uh, let, me, let me just verify that real quick. It'll take me just a second. Barbarian D2. Uh, yes, they get 2 per Vitality point. So, uh, or sorry, no, 4. They get 4 life per Vitality point. Nice. Um, so they're getting a total of, like, 200 HP just from the 49 Vitality. Um, which means that it's probably not getting buffed up by the by the the shouts because it's still only giving about 200 even with the shouts. Let's do a quick refresh. Let's leave the game and rejoin, and we'll uh, we'll double check it one more time without the shouts. So 600 to 700, 700 and 800, yeah, so it's about the same. It's not being affected by the shouts at all, so interesting. Uh, we also have Replenish Life plus 20 on this axe, which is kind of insane. It's a pretty high amount of replenishment, um, and it does mean that we're, our HP is going to go up pretty health, pretty fast. So not only does it give us a nice little bump to, um, to our HP, it also gives us a nice regeneration to our HP as well, which will end up in a nice net positive all around. Uh, we also have all resistances 10, which is not really a whole lot. Um, I hate to poo-poo on a stat, especially something like all resistances, but all resistances 10 is, is practically nothing for a high-level character. Now, for a level 35 character who's in normal difficulty, all resistances 10 is decent. But all resistance 10 is not as good uh, in Nightmare and Hell difficulty when the penalties start to get kind of insane, and, and they do. Uh, we also have Repairs Durability 1 in 4 seconds on this, um, which is a really nice modifier if you can find an Ethereal version. Uh, that's where things come in really fancy, because at level 35, you, you can obviously, um, you obviously can't use many Ethereal items because they will break. But this particular item is not going to break because it has the Repairs Durability modifier on it. So the focus of this video is really going to be on the Ethereal version, 
because the ethereal version has the very nice 50% base damage increase, uh, which the 175% is then going off of. So the ethereal version has 57 to 140 damage, which is a hell of a lot better for level 35, and, uh, and it also has a lower strength requirement of only 63, which is not bad at all. And uh, it, quite honestly, um, it's a pretty nice little weapon if you can find the F version. Um, whether you can find the ethereal version or not, though, is kind of... I don't know. Neither here nor there. Um, it could make a very good weapon for a barbarian. It could make a very good weapon for a druid, especially a shapeshifter druid. I could totally see it being a pretty good shapeshifter druid item, especially considering they buff their HP so much by other means. Having another buff to HP is just going to make them, like, raw damage sponge gods. Even if the Oak Sage and the Bear Form don't modify the Vitality bonus, it doesn't matter. It's still 200 more HP that they're going to have on top of all the other HP bonuses that they have. Um, now, the real beauty of this is we can upgrade it, and I'm kind of interested to see how the War Warlord's Trust upgrades. I think it's going to upgrade pretty nice. Uh, let's start out with the non-ethereal version first, uh, which is going to cost us a Pull, a Lum, and a Perfect Emerald, which is pretty expensive, especially for a level 35 character. Um, so Warlord's Trust Military Axe is going to go from 38 to 93 damage, 73 strength, level 35 to uh, 68 to 338 damage, much better damage, uh, 196 strength, ridiculous strength requirement, and only level 49. Only level 49? Um, at level 49, that is kind of insane. Um, even as the non-ethereal version, uh, just simply because it's a pretty nice damage for level 49. I mean, very nice damage for level 49. Uh, that 196 strength, though, is kind of insane, and... Um, I don't know a lot of characters who can be level 49 who are going to have 196 strength points to put in. I mean, even a Barbarian, uh, which starts out with... Um, uh, what does the Barbarian start out with? His, his starting stats, he's 30 strength. So even a Barbarian that starts out with 30 strength and gets 5 points per level. Um, so we're talking about level 49, so 48 times 5. Uh, we're talking about 240 points that the Barbarian has to spend. So we're going to have to subtract 30 from 196, which brings us down to, what, 166? So 240 minus 166 would bring us to 74 left over. So we would still have 74 points to put into something else other than strength um, on a Barbarian. Uh, it would be a little bit worse on other characters that start with lower strength requirements. Um... I mean, granted, we could mitigate a little bit of that with maybe like something like uh, Saigon's Gloves would have plus 10, uh, maybe a couple other pieces of equipment that have like some strength here or there, but we're not going to be able to mitigate it too much. Um, it's, it's a crazy amount of strength, and we're going to have to give up a large amount of life to reach that point. Now, it's probably a good thing that Warlords Trust gives 49 vitality because we're going to need it because we're going to have to spend every single point that we have in, uh, into strength to be able to put this on. And it might actually be worth it, especially if it's the ethereal version. So let's take a look at the ethereal version and let's get an idea of um, the ethereal version's stats on this. Uh, so the ethereal version can also be upgraded, and uh, it is going to upgrade even better than the non-ethereal version, because we are going to go from 57 to 140 damage, level uh, 35 with 63 strength, to... 101 to 506 damage, that's kind of insane for level 49, and only a strength requirement of 186. Uh, so we did lose 10 on the strength requirement, specifically for um, the ethereal nature of it. The physical damage on this is kind of nutso, uh, especially for level 49. I feel like if you ran around with this at level 49, you'd just be demolishing everything. Uh, there is a little bit of a speed issue here, though, because it has no increased attack speed. It is a fast attack speed item, which means it's not particularly fast. Um, it might be something that you would put maybe a shale rune in or something like that. Uh, however, I could also see putting, like, an ohm rune in it, maybe, uh, specifically because an ohm rune could increase the physical damage even further. Um, you could get 50% enhanced physical damage off of an ohm rune, which would bring up the damage... A pretty tidy amount. Um, and the fact that you don't have to spend a Zodder in it, because of course it's repairs durability one in four seconds, I mean, it's kind of sweet. 
Um, I kind of want to take it out and maybe, like, bash some things with it. Uh, what am I set up for? I'm set up for Berserk. All right. Let's, uh, let's go over to, uh, Frigid Highlands and let's punk Eldritch the Rectifier with this weapon. Let's see how it does in Hell Difficulty. And, uh, let's check and see what player count we're into. We should be in eight. So we're in players eight. I'm out of mana. No! I should have brought mana potions. We go grab some mana potions. Fine. Berserk is always such a hard skill to use because it uh, it just it makes you such a freaking raw sponge of a character. I swear, every single time I do a video, every single time, and I go find Eldritch, he's freaking mana burn. Every <laughs> every single time, he's mana burn. And like, and then I'm I'm stuck like with no mana, like in the middle of just like laughing at myself maniacally. So, I mean, damage-wise, it's not, like, too amazing. I mean, it does seem to do pretty well, but this is, of course, player's eight. Um, where would we be as a level 49 character? That's the question. So, like, if we were a level 49 character, what's, uh, what's the zone that we would probably be in? Uh, according to our little map here, it looks like level 49 is around Act 3 Nightmare. Let's go take a look at Nightmare Difficulty, and let's see how this thing performs in Act 3 Nightmare, shall we? Let's go to Lower Kurost. So, it demolishes here. In Player's 8 Nightmare. That's honestly impressive. Uh, I killed those guys like they were nothing. Let's see if we can find a different monster type. I mean, these are Player's 8 champions. And then we can see the regeneration as well. So we've got 20 regen. So our HP is popping up pretty fast. It looks like we're going at least one a second, if not two a second at some points. I think it might be about 1.5 per second um, from that 20 replenish life that we have on the on the weapon. And, uh, I mean, honestly, with this weapon, you can customize it a little bit with the socket, which if you're going to spend a pull and a lum rune on it, find the ethereal version and upgrade it, you're probably going to socket it and put something nice in it. So it's really a matter of what you're going to socket it with, not so much if you're going to socket it. Um, I feel like the shale rune would be a good choice just to speed it up a little bit because it's not like super duper fast. But um, it's 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 definitely an interesting weapon. Anytime you see a weapon that has a repairs durability mod on it, um, it can definitely be um, interesting if you can find the ethereal version. Oh. Like, the Honsu Nine Yari is a very interesting one if you can find it in the Ethereal version. And it looks like also the Warlord's Trust is also one. Um, unfortunately, the Warlord, Warlord's Trust can't be used by anybody, really, in the, any, any mercenaries in the game like Honsu Nine Yari can. And um, being a two-handed weapon, it is going to be specifically relegated to the two-handed weapon users. So for the most part, you're going to see this on, like I said, Druids, Barbarians... Um, and very few other characters are going to get their hands on this and utilize it because for some reason or another, um, despite the fact that Blizzard decided to put in, or Blizzard North decided to put in like thousands of two-handed weapons, um, they only really made like two characters in the game that really use two-handed weapons. And even then, sometimes they don't use two-handed weapons. So it's like <laughs> the two-handed weapons are like the red-headed stepchilds of the, uh, of the Diablo 2 world. Uh, let's take a look over on Silas Pen real quick, and let's see if we can figure out where this item drops, shall we? All right, so here we are over on Silas Pen, and uh, let's go ahead and put in about 100% magic find for a level 35 item. That sounds fair. 
Let's go to the Uniques and Warlords Trust. There it is. Let's take a look at bosses first. And it uh, doesn't look like it has a really hard time to drop, but good luck finding an ethereal one. Uh, no matter how many of these you find, they might all be regular ones. Uh, the ethereal versions are always a lot harder to come by than the regulars. Uh, but it does look like Nightmare and Dariel has a pretty good chance of dropping this at 1 in 524. And even Normal Bale has a pretty good chance at 1 in 544. So you might get this as you're EXPing up on Normal Bale runs, uh, which is a pretty easy place to find things. Um, you know, like if you're doing the bail runs anyway, there's a good chance it might drop. And there's also a good chance nobody's going to want it because two-headed weapons are relatively undesired. Um, let's take a look at super uniques real quick. So Nightmare Cow King has a pretty decent chance at 1 in 3,335. Uh, Fire Eye in the Palace Level 3 has a decent chance, 1 in 6,540. He's very easy to farm. Uh, so is Beetle Burst at 1 in 6,405. And Bone Ash in the Cathedral, uh, that's a really easy kill at 1 in 6,265. And then we also have uh, in Jail Level 2, he's a little bit harder to get to, but he is uh, Pit Spawn Foul Dog. He's a Tainted. He's a super unique Tainted that lives in Jail Level 2. Um, you're probably going to... Um, not farm him, but if you do happen to go there, maybe you know, kill him. Uh, or look for him, at least. Uh, Dark Elder is also a good choice here at 1 in 6,573. He's in Lost City. Um, and a lot of good choices. I think we've got a lot of good choices to try and farm this particular item if you want to get your hands on it. Uh, but like I said before, good luck getting your hands on an ethereal version, which is really the one that you want. So if you're trying to like level up a character with this, um, you know, you get you find yourself the non uh, the ethereal version, and you use it from like uh, you know level 35 when you get your hands on it. Maybe you socket it. Maybe you put a shale rune in there, um, and then eventually you upgrade it to the level 49 version when you hit 49, and then you utilize that massive amount of damage, the 101 to 506 on your maybe your druid or something like that. Uh, the problem with this is it has a lot of stiff competition. So if you're gonna specifically hunt down an ethereal warlord's trust, there might not, um, you know, it might not be the the ch thing that you're gonna choose. There might be other things like an ethereal ribcracker might be a better choice, or just a regular ribcracker. Um, you know, a ribcracker is actually a surprisingly low level item and can be utilized almost about the same time as a warlord's trust and can also be upgraded. Um, although I do believe the level requirement goes up a lot higher than level 49. Um, it also can't be used in the ethereal form without a Zod rune in it, which is also a big downside of the Ribcracker. So maybe this could be an interesting uh, intermediary in between the Ribcracker and the ethereal Zodded Ribcracker um, that you have your heart set on. Um, I think that's pretty much everything when it comes to Warlord's Trust, so I'm going to end it here. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, as always, keep watching.